Welcome to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. I'm your host, Jim Goddard. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, welcome back to the show. Jim, I'm happy to be back. John, Golden Goliath popped this week. Was that in sympathy with Great Bear reaching a billion-dollar valuation? Or is there something new about the Kauai Project south of Great Bear? I think it is both. Uh, Great Bear this year, uh, this 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 week, uh, hit seventeen dollars, uh, which uh, gave the company at least temporarily a one billion dollar valuation, which is uh, double what Evolution Mining paid for the entire uh, Red Lake district uh, and the seven million plus high grade ounces uh, that were still in the ground that it purchased from uh, Newmont Gold Corp uh, uh, earlier this year. So this is a uh, uh, a staggering uh, a price appreciation that we're witnessing. Now, what's going on at Great Bear is interesting. Uh, uh, a year and a half ago, when they first uh, picked up the Dixie uh, project uh, from Newmont for a pittance, uh, they discovered the Dixie Limb Hinge Zone, which was a high-grade, small version of what they find in the Red Lake District itself. But uh, that turned out to be, well, you had to be pretty deep to make it bigger, but they had realized that there was this 22-kilometer fault, the LP fault structure, which um, had been known about in the past, but nobody really sort of thought much of it. Nothing had been found. But the um, publication of the um, little probe study by the Ontario government uh, done in 2004 revealed a deep-seated architecture that appears to be what fed the uh, the Red Lake District uh, with uh, with its huge gold endowment, but it also appeared to link to the LP fault and farther south to the uh, 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 Pacwash fault structure, which the um, Golden Goliath Quai property uh, straddles, and an even farther parallel structure called uh, the Sydney Lake structure. Well, Great Bear, Bear uh, started drilling along this this LP fault structure and realized, oh. It's a completely different style of mineralization. It does have high grade, but it's more of a disseminated nature. It's in different rocks. And in fact, it looks like the kind of mineralization you find in the, in the Timmins district. So the story became this could have tens of millions of ounces uh, similar to the Timmins district. And, and they've been busy drilling away. But then that kind of limited the upside because you're going to have to drill millions of meters uh to uh, put together resources, and that's going to take forever. So the latest spin in their presentation is that they rediscovered the Hemlo system, which was a uh, 23 million ounce deposit or, or cluster of deposits, all within a four-kilometer segment. And it's not associated with any of these uh, big uh, Abitibi Greenstone Belt uh, uh, structures. It's just at the end of the Kappas casing structure in a place where it wasn't supposed to be. And nothing else has ever been found like it in, in Ontario, though everybody dreams maybe there is something like that. So their latest spin coming from Great Bear is that this stuff hangs together in a disseminated type of manner where we think maybe we could end up having a Hemlo equivalent uh, discovery within uh, only a fraction of this uh, big fault system. And that's something that you could drill off uh, much more effectively than chasing all these uh, uh, splays and shear zones coming off the uh, the main LP fault. So that's what's opened up the upside for Great Bear and its uh, Dixie project. But Goliath Gold didn't really move in response to that. It moved when the company put out an update on the exploration work that it has done so far this year. Now, we know very little about the Packwash uh, 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 fault area that the Kauai property straddles. Uh, it's it's pretty overburden covered, very little uh, outcrop. Uh, last year, they went after they picked it up, they did a couple of small IP surveys, the east and west grid that suggested, oh, there might be some sulfides in there. But then they brought Bob Middleton in last year, and uh, he's designed a program with Paul Sabara, which is turning out to be a huge boon for the company. The first thing they did was... Uh, fly an airborne survey over the whole property, hoping to see uh, where there are these structural splays, these second and third order faults coming off the main pack wash fault, which itself will not have really had any gold stick into it, but it would have been the conduit 
that fed all these uh, adjacent structures. And that work told them, wow, this is much busier than we thought. We have lots of these secondary structures. In fact, there's even parallel structures to this. So the initial plan of doing uh, an expanded IP survey has now been expanded to do the entire 10-kilometer uh, uh, strike of the Kwai property. And we won't know for a couple of weeks uh, uh, what the, the results of this is. It's not going to tell us anything about gold potential, but it will tell us if there is a disseminated uh, disseminated uh, sulfide mineralization in there, which is usually associated with gold mineralization. But Bob Middleton came up with another somewhat risky idea. He said, you know, we really need to prove that this thing is fertile with uh, gold, that the, that the fluids that came up the pack wash fault had the same gold payload as the ones that went up the LP fault and up into the Red Lake District. And just randomly drilling holes on the IP anomalies, uh, uh, we're going to, that's going to be a hard sell. Let's try a basal till sampling program. And so they conducted a, a, a till sampling program, and the idea is to get down to the base of the overburden, uh, and collect the minerals, the grains there, and, uh, and, and pick them. You know, in, in the diamond field, you, you pick for indicator minerals, but in Ontario, you pick for gold grains. And Stu Averill's overburden uh, drilling management is the uh, best company at doing this. Uh, so they shipped off all these till samples, and uh, Stu is now busy. His crew are picking these. They look under the microscope. And what we're hoping to see are pristine gold grains, uh, suggesting that they haven't really traveled from, from very far. But what uh, Bob also did when they uh, collected these uh, till samples was he extracted a fine fraction a finer material which has been shipped away for geochemical assays, the whole 41 element suite. Because, uh, and that will tell you if there's sort of a gold cloud in the background, it won't be very meaningful because in Ontario, glacial dispersion will have a, you know, an anomalous gold cloud everywhere. But if they get kicks in elements such as arsenic and bismuth, which are associated with these gold systems and have a gold geochemical geochemistry, well, then they have a case that there's mineralization here that has golden association with it, and, of, and, and they may have those results by the end of, end of next week. The till sampling results probably um, aren't, uh, aren't going to arrive until um, mid-July. So the, uh, a drill program which is focused based on the, on the IP data and the, and the magnetic data and the till sampling, all of that uh, should come together by the the late part of uh, July. And if they can show that this area also has anomalous gold, market will look at the um, sort of $15, $20 million valuation of gold and Goliath and uh, look at the billion-dollar valuation of Great Bear and say, wow, if Great Bear keeps going and they do have a hemlock, or, or just even if they retreat back to uh, the more modest Timmins, Timmins District equivalent, uh, we have a lot of catch-up to do. And that's what we saw this week when uh, uh, Golden Goliath, which had to raise a uh, you know, half million bucks at a nickel with a nickel unit deal, you know, slumbering at six cents, all of a sudden bumped to 14 cents, and is now sort of set creating a new base between 10 and 10 and 15 cents. So uh, two reasons: the expanding uh, potential outcome for the Great Play, uh, uh, Great Bear LP fault play itself, and emerging evidence that the pack wash uh, fault structure has the right sort of setting for uh, hosting something similar. And that was the other thing that they got lucky about with uh, with the till sampling is uh, in some places the, 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 the their little digger got into bedrock, so they were able to extract bedrock and map it, and that shows that the geology isn't the simple, not-so-exciting geology north and south of the fault that's been mapped by the... Uh, large-scale uh, government geologists. There are the sort of rocks, the felsic, felsic tufts, and the mafic volcanics that are associated with the uh, LP fault, except they're on opposite sides, uh, almost like a mirror image. So that's that's a good thing because these, these rocks, especially the mafic volcanics, uh, they lend themselves uh, better to, uh, to shearing and creating the right sort of depositional environments uh, for fluids to drop out their gold payload if indeed the fluids that went up the pack wash fault structures did have a gold payload in them. We'll have more with John Kaiser right after this. 
Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, Amex Exploration is on the move today. Has its Peron Gold Project hit a discovery tipping point? Jim, we're seeing a lot of things come together in general for whole um, Ontario, Quebec uh, exploration scene. Um, Amex, its Peron project has been around for decades. Uh, I had Amex as a bottom fish ages ago. Ecnico Eagle had it under option, uh, option for a while. Um, but there were, there were some sort of high grade gold zones. Uh, it's, it's on a, it's in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt, but it's in a fault north of the, uh, famous, uh, uh, Destor Porcupine and, uh, Cadillac Larder Lake, uh, faults. Uh, it's, uh, you know, has some stuff in it, but it's not that famous. And it's south of the Casa Berardi fault uh, break where there have also been, you know, mines developed. Uh, but in late 2018, the company on its own nickel, not through farm outs, decided to drill it and came up with some high-grade intersections. And at first, the, the market was skeptical. They say, oh, you're just redrilling these erratic zones that don't amount to very much, uh, but it caught Eric uh, Sprott's attention, and he financed it, and that got the ball rolling. And what they have done is, uh, of these three known zones on the property, the east zone, which is which they call the high-grade zone, they've demonstrated that uh, the high-grade gold mineralization persists at depth. We're talking about now down to 775 meters, and the other ones are uh, the, 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 the western zones, uh, they're, they're somewhat shallower. They haven't seen as much attention. But this week, uh, or in the past week, they managed to raise $16 million. Uh, uh, they now have six rigs on the property. And uh, those will, they're funded sufficiently for doing uh, 100,000 plus meters of drilling. And they're chasing this system down, down plunge. And the idea here is that what was at surface is not really that interesting, but going deeper is revealing that there's a lot more going on. And in their presentation, they do sort of a scaled contrast between uh, the strike of their property, the location of the uh, three known zones, and they, they, they compare that to that segment, that 10-kilometer segment between Doyon and La Ronde on the Cadillac Larder Break, where there's been 28 million ounces outlined to a depth of four, four and a half kilometers, 4,500 meters. And here they've just for the first time ever pushed the uh, high grade uh, east zone down to a depth of 775 and, and the, the gold is improving, it's getting better. And, and as a kind of a contrast, uh, consider the Fenelon project uh, which has been around uh, forever, which Walbridge took on and turned into a uh, sort of a make-work program for the miners. Uh, Chase the uh, um, Gabro hosted uh, uh, gold mineralization down deeper. And ironically, when they drilled a, a deep hole into that, uh, it penetrated through into the Jerome, uh, Jerome intrusion to the west, which was not thought to have anything because at surface there's not much interesting. And uh, at a fairly substantial depth, they intersected high-grade gold mineralization. And since then, this Area 51 has emerged as, wow, everybody's referring to Fenelon potential in that whole detour lake trend. And so there's all the land there has been staked up, deals are being done. And ironically, uh, the shallower drilling of the Area 51, um, it does not have 
to start a high-grade mineralization at depth. If somebody had bothered to drill in that, that area and encountered uh, what's that surface, it would have been shrugged. Yep, it's uh, you know another typical uh, Ontario, Quebec uh, type of gold mineralization that's uh, not the really good stuff like the ones that have been put into production. And you would never have had reason to drill deeper where the high grade starts to blossom and you have a substantial new discovery emerging on, on that, that Walbridge now controls. And they recently absorbed the Balmoral Resources, which um, had owned all that, owns all that surrounding land, and which was the source of the Fenelon project for Walbridge uh, to do their do their mining thing. But it's I- ironic that this deeper discovery it was done sort of ass backwards. Uh, uh, they found the high grade deep by accidentally drilling into rocks that weren't supposed to have something. When they followed it to the surface, it's not so great at surface. It's it's a pretty much a blind system, and we're seeing perhaps something similar happen happening with Amex's uh, Perone project, where what was known at surface was dismissed as an also ram, never going to be a mine. Now they have the money to go deeper, chase it down, and it is blossoming. You know, Cisco Mining pioneered that with the uh, windfall project, where we knew we had those two and a half million ounces near surface uh, not really hanging together. But they rolled up their sleeves, uh, raised uh, several hundred million dollars to push that whole system much deeper and show that there's a lot more to the windfall project in the Lobel Sarkavion area, which is another one of these areas where uh, just doesn't quite have it like the main break stuff, but now they have six million ounces there, and that company has a billion dollar valuation based on on, on that discovery. So for a lot of um, Ontario and Quebec, uh, there is a huge revival of interest underway. It's against the backdrop of a gold uptrend that hasn't really hit the trigger for a breakout where a mania kicks in. That probably won't happen until it blows through two thousand dollars. The reason for gold to then keep going, nothing is going to make those reasons go away in the short term. And we're, we're being, instead of the expiration trickling down from a huge gold bull market, we're seeing expiration actually uh, front run the big gold bull market that's uh, unfolding in the background. And that's pretty exciting because you can have a tiny company with a you know, $5 million market cap all of a sudden, somebody looks at the geology and says, you know, that's just like that other piece of crap over there that has turned into something absolutely fabulous. We're going to give you some money and get this started. So it's pretty exciting times out there in uh, in, in Ontario and Quebec, and hopefully we'll see similar momentum build in other places like British Columbia, uh, the Yukon, and, uh, and Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and even eastern Canada, uh, Atlantic Canada a huge exploration revival like nothing that we've ever seen in the entire history of Canadian junior exploration activity. Discovery Watch will be right back. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with John Kaiser. John, do you have anything new for our Sullivan Two Hunters? Well, I feel guilty uh, coming up with another Sullivan Two Hunt uh, because I've served up uh, a number of them in the past few years of Discovery Watch, and none of them so far have delivered a win. But this one, a new one, is is a very tempting short-term opportunity that uh, within about a month, you know, six six weeks maybe we could know if we finally have 
Sullivan too. This is a little property called the DD property. It is owned by PJX Resources, uh, which we featured as a um, Sullivan II hunt uh, for its vine project, which is to the northeast. The DD is uh, to the southwest in what they call the Panda Base, and the same sort of you know Aldrich Formation rocks that host the Sullivan deposit uh, to the you know, considerably to the north. But this was under option to Tech, which picked it up in 2016. In 2018, they drilled a hole to 1,425 meters, aiming at a magnetotelluric uh, target, a deep target, which was supposed to be around uh, around that depth, and instead they got into a gabbro sill, or at least uh, everybody hopes it's a sill, but if it's a dike, then the one that cuts cross-cuts the stratigraphy vertically, uh, uh, then that might explain the MT anomaly. Tech got to this depth uh, uh, fairly late in the exploration season and had stopped the hole. And one would have expected they they extended another you know 200 to 300 meters to try and hit the LMC, the, the lower middle Aldrich uh, contact, and that's the so-called Sullivan time horizon where all this activity happened in the Purcell Basin, and that's where you would expect to find another Sullivan type deposit. But for whatever bean counter reason, Tech could not get the money, the budget, to finish this hole. They had cased it, left it in place so that it could be continued. And so late last year, they handed it back to PJX. Now, in the meantime, the original vendor of the property in 2015, David Pegan, he's one of these um, Sullivan experts who's been involved in this area for, for ages, you know, over 50 years uh, if you want to ask any question about what makes Sullivan and the whole context uh, tick, Dave Keegan is the person to ask. And he had created a company called DLP Resources, Inc., which uh, had assembled several properties, including the Aldridge 1 and 2, which are somewhat to the north of the DD area. Uh, these are projects uh, that are Sullivan-style SEDEX uh, targets. And they vended this in through a um, qualifying transaction of a capital pool shell in November, issued 32 million shares. So they're all escrowed under that three-year release program. Uh, there's a whole bunch of heavy hitters that showed up uh, in the company. Dave Egan himself uh, simply has the title project geologist. Uh, Jim Stipula, who is a veteran Sullivan II hunter, having uh, chased after a uh, Sullivan twos in places like the Vine Project, which PGX still owns 100%. Uh, uh, they were ready to go and throw the Aldrich one and two. And when suddenly Tech gave this back to PJX, PJX is busy still, you know, fiddling with its Vine Project, but it's shifting its focus to its uh, Eddie Shear Vulcan Gold Belt Project, uh, where it thinks there's a much younger gold district uh, to the northeast of this DD, DD area. And they did a deal. It's actually a strong deal, much better than what uh, what, what Tech did uh, with with PJX. Uh, um, MG Capital can earn 50% by spending four million dollars over four years, but then to get to 75%, it needs to deliver a bankable feasibility study uh, within eight years of this agreement. And if you're developing delineating a, a deposit that's going to be 15, 1,600 meters deep, well, that's 100 million bucks. That's going to cost to do that. Whereas the uh, old tech deal, tech could have blown the 75% uh, by just spending $8 million, and then PGX, which is 25% interest, would have been dead in the water trying to keep up with a minority stake and, and no real reporting reporting rights. So this deal was made for finding something quickly, ramping it up and getting taken out by, you know, perhaps even tech itself, who has the uh, who has the trail smelter in that area, which uh, Sullivan fed for almost a hundred years. So they are going to go in there and re-enter this hole. They're waiting for the formal transfer of the, the permit from tech, and they have to do some First Nations consultations. They hope to be able to drill this by the uh, middle of July, uh, sometime in the second half. It would probably only take a week to uh, deepen this hole if there are no problems. Uh, if they're lucky, 
they drill a little bit farther. This thing does prove to be a sill. And Dave Pegan, who has looked at the core logging and said, you know, this thing has the hor look of horizontal flow. This is like all the other gabbos in the region. It's a flat lying sill. We're going to punch through it. The gabbo is not the explanation for the MT, MT anomaly. There's going to be a massive sulfide body down below. And if we plow into it, well, we have a Sullivan II home run for a mere expenditure of a couple hundred thousand dollars. And if it isn't quite there, but the evidence uh, is there that there's something in the vicinity, they can do a downhole geophysical survey to see where it is, and they can use this initial hole as a pilot hole to drill wedged daughter holes to probe around and, and see where exactly the system is. So I, I can't resist presenting this as a discovery watch up play. It could be dead in the six to eight weeks. It's not like these other ones where we have to seem to have to wait years for them to get to the target and, and finally put the nails in the coffin of a, you know, that this or that particular Sullivan to hunt. Eagle Plains did show that on its Vulcan project that there was an explanation for the uh, uh, MT anomaly. It was a gabbro, a, one of those vertical type gab gabbros uh, with, um, you know, uh, graphite in it to create the conductivity, but they proved the other thing that there that the LMC is farther to the west than had been and thought or assumed and during all past exploration, and uh, so that project's live, but it doesn't have a clear cut target. And if if uh, MG Capital uh, should you know prove that there's really nothing at, at the at, at you know beyond fourteen twenty five meters, well they'll go to the uh, Aldrich 1 and Aldrich 2 projects, uh, both of which have targets ready for drilling uh, three to four holes in Aldrich 1 and uh, um, you know a couple holes into Aldrich 2, which has seen a lot of exploration in the past, whereas Aldrich 1 is in a sort of lousier location, so it has not seen as much exploration. So Dave Pegan, with the backing of Jim Stipula and his network of uh, financial powerhouses, uh, they're going to be carrying on the uh, Sullivan II hunt in southeast B.C. Uh, for at least uh, uh, the rest of this year. John, thank you for the update. You're welcome, Jim. We've been speaking with John Kaiser, his website, kaiserresearch.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Discovery Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Discovery Watch is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.